Good morning. It's Wednesday, April 29th, and it is a tidbit windy today. Uh, good news is it didn't rain overnight, and uh, Lizzie's excited to plant some soybeans, or sniff out some critters. Uh, I'm looking over the planter, trying to see if anything fell off yesterday that I didn't know about, uh, and I don't think that, I, mean, I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, seem to have all the gauge wheels and such. Um, probably need to check a few opener blades. Um, I've got a few sort of marked on the row units, um, like this one I need to watch the lead disc, um, which probably means the bearing is a little loose, but as long as it doesn't completely fall apart, just keep running it. Uh, one of the down pressure springs that I worked on yesterday, um, so this was one that kind of had bent the loop on the bottom that hooks in right down here um, broke so I'm gonna have to get that replaced um, but hopefully it shouldn't be too big of a deal kind of a five minute ten minute type of job um, may need to get some of those ordered um, there's another one on one of the pusher units that looks a little sketchy which it's holding on so far but I don't know how long that's gonna last so um, otherwise everything seems to be serving the purpose and hopefully we'll get some soybeans in the ground today. Um, not going to be able to spray anything. Uh, tomorrow looks like a beautiful day to spray. Um, so it's going to be gust to like 45 or something like that this afternoon I think. Which is way too windy to spray. So plant today. Um, no wind tomorrow so we'll spray tomorrow and kind of see how far we get. Um, I should be able to cover a lot more ground with the sprayer in a, sprayer in a day than I can with the planter in a day, as long as nothing serious breaks. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to put a pretty good dent in things here the next few days. Um, at present, I don't think there's a chance of rain until like Sunday maybe. Um, so if we've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days of good running, um, that might get us pretty close on soybeans. We'll see. We're now doing a little joyriding across the field. Uh, I got out to kind of check and see how the depth was doing and noticed that one of the rows was running way deep and that there wasn't a gauge wheel attached to it. So somewhere out here in the field is a left-hand gauge wheel and the challenge now is to find it. I should have everything to put stuff back together. Um, on the corn planter, the pins that hold those on have a, a cotter key. So basically, you stick it through and then bend it with a pair of pliers so that it can't come back out. Um, the ones on this planter uh, are held on with a winch pin, which is kind of a pin with a spring loop. And what happens, especially in stocks, is that uh, those stocks will hit the winch pin and pop it open, and then the gauge wheel can fall off. Um, so, I would have thought I would have seen it by now. Unless it fell off later than I thought. It's kind of hard to tell because, like, you can sometimes get dark streaks where you're, you're planting in the marker. Don't see it over here anywhere. Anyway. Um, we're going to be driving around until we find it. I could have gone and got the four-wheeler and driven faster, but I thought since I have a pretty small area to search, I should be able to find it this way. But so far, not seeing it. Worst case, I have some spares, but we'd really rather not have it laying in the field. Plus, it should maybe be adjusted more correctly if I put the same one back on for depth control and stuff. Um, hmm. Well, hopefully I'll find that on the pass back. What was lost has been found. I should have retraced my steps a little better, I think, because I actually had just lost it when I stopped. Looking at some of the other passes, I thought that had been off of there for a while. Um, so I just need to get some washers back on here to get it spaced right stick the cotter key in instead of the linchpin style like that one and get back to work so the way this planter is set up there's seven rows on one module and eight rows on the other 
So normally this runs out first. So I packed it clear full and didn't fill the other one clear full and maybe undershot the other one because it is empty and there's still a fair amount in this one. Um, in any case, we're gonna fill it back up. be enough to get this field finished um, I'm gonna hopefully finish out here I've got less than 10 acres left I think uh, and then I'm hoping that I can get the rest of this variety on the planter and then head to a different field and send dad to town with the beautiful wagon um, to get another variety see how we come out I don't think there's a lot left and the planter should hold 30 units or better. Um, so that I'm hoping it'll go on, not sure. It's Wednesday afternoon and got the patch that I was working on of soybeans finished, um, about 35 acres there. And then did a couple things on the planter. Uh, also washed the back window of the tractor so I can see out a little bit better. I think there was Maybe some oil residue left from when I blew the hose on the drill um, in November, December when I was drilling waterways last fall. And I don't know that it ever got washed particularly well. Um, so especially late in the day when the sun was shining, you'd get a lot of glare off the dust on the glass. Um, and I'm doing this in the tractor, this video in the tractor cab because it's super windy. Um, the prediction was gust to 45. I haven't actually checked. It could be more than that, actually. Um, but uh, we're going to be planting into some rye here. Um, it hasn't gotten real big, um, but the way that rye grows, as I understand it, um, you get a lot of below ground growth before you get a lot of above ground growth. So hopefully there's a lot of roots in the soil that are holding things together and going to hold things together as the soybeans get started. Um, normally corn once you get it out of the ground it grows fast and puts down enough roots that it holds things pretty well soybeans are a little riskier uh, or a little more prone to erosion um, not a, not as able to hold soil um, and that's one of the reasons that we have this planter so we're planting 15 inch rows instead of 30 inch rows like we do on the corn which helps get the ground cover um, or the soybean plants frequent enough that you don't get washing between the rows or as much water, you know, washing through one row, essentially. Um, it seems like the narrow rows make a big difference in the erosion from what I can tell. Um, I have done a little bit of 30 inch row soybeans, um, but normally there's a little bit of a yield advantage or can be a little bit of a yield advantage with the narrower rows. Pros and cons for sure. Maintaining the second planter is not necessarily inexpensive or easy. Uh, definitely adds to the workload, but it works pretty well. Uh, and being narrower, it's slower, which also means that planting soybeans takes longer than if I use the corn planter. Um, but with the steep of some of the stuff that I farm is, or I mean, not that there aren't other places that farm far steeper than we do, it seems to be worth it, I guess, um, to try to keep the erosion under control and you know have a little bit faster shading to hopefully um, outcompete some weeds maybe some yield advantage as well. But uh, we're at the next field, so I'm going to cut the video off, um, fire up the fans, need to prime the drums, and then also pull the pin out of the marker. Um, one of the disadvantages to this planter is that it's pretty wide going down the road, and the farm that's a ways away this year is soybeans, and there's basically no way to get to that farm other than going down the highway unless you go 
I guess three miles out of the way and three miles back just because there's so many bridges out right now on the gravel roads. Um, so we're going to be pulling this down at U.S. Highway here sometime in the next few days, and that'll be a joy, I'm sure, because um, it's it started out as an eight-row planter, and then Dad put the split rows on it probably mid to late 90s he built it. Um, so it sort of, I mean, it was actually an in-transport eight-row, um, and then he sort of bought a 12-row semi-mounted and used the modules and some of the hydraulics and stuff off the 12 row and then the extra rows to get the split rows and uh, it's definitely planted a lot of acres of soybeans and there's some things that are a little bit worn on it pivot points and such but does the job um, for soybeans we're not necessarily as concerned about precise seeding depth um, or a lot of things I guess we're just trying to get them into some moisture and dirt over the top um, getting the dirt over the top is kind of important especially for the stuff that I'm spraying after I plant because uh, some of those pre-chemicals are pretty hard on the soybeans if they get to the actual seed um, without having some soil to tie that herbicide up. So one other bit that I forgot to mention was I ended up pulling all the rest of the linchpins out of the gauge field arms and replaced the ones that hadn't been replaced with cotter pins. Um, when I fixed the gauge wheel that fell off this morning, I had to use all the rest of the washers that I had that were extras. So if I lose any more, it means I have to rob them off the corn planter. Uh, I did order some, but they won't be here until at least tomorrow. Um, so trying to keep those from falling off and losing any more washers. Um, out of 15 rows and two on each, so 30 total, there was like 12, I think, 11 or 12 that hadn't been switched. So um, that probably gives you an idea how many of those have been either uh, popped open where we saw that they were at risk of falling out or did fall out over the last few years. Um, but hopefully that's a thing of the past. Right now we need some spaghetti western factory.
varieties and back at the home farm now. Um, one of the sort of issues I'm having is I want to be able to see my mark from the markers without making a huge trench and moving a ton of soil because uh, this part that I'm planting now has already been sprayed with the breeze, the pre-emerge herbicide, and I don't really want to move that a lot. I want it to be like even across the field. So if I move the dirt, then I'm moving the herbicide. Um, and the problem I'm having is that I'm either not getting a mark at all or the thing wants to flop so that there's a huge angle and then it's throwing dirt about three, three to five feet, at least one row wide. Um, and I don't know what the solution to that is. Um, we switch these out to these notch marker blades um, with kind of an adapter thing. So I think they're like a Kinsey style blade, if I remember right. Um, I think I need something with a depth band and maybe like a larger blade with the uh, notches um, to be able to like consistently throw like a one inch deep uh, chunk of dirt. Because the problem is in no-till, you can have hard spots and soft spots, especially on the corn ground. I mean, this is obviously soybeans on stocks, maybe not as often uh, an issue, whereas on, on the stubble you'll have the uh, knife tracks from the anhydrous um, that kind of are really soft and then potentially, you know, tire tracks that are really hard. Um, so finding a happy medium where you can make a mark without digging in is a real problem there. The problem with stocks is that they're pretty tough and they cover a lot of the ground, so you need a way to be aggressive enough to make a mark, but not so aggressive that you're throwing a bunch of dirt, especially when you're able to run fast, which I'm not really able to run too fast on this farm, um, just because it's not as smooth and kind of the soil type seems like it's harder, at least in some of the thinner spots. Um, so I guess I'm going to make that one more aggressive and this one less aggressive and see if they stay and chances are they won't and I'll be screwing around with it some more. I got the markers adjusted, however, part of the reason that this one is really aggressive seems to be that that little bracket adapter thing is busted. Um, it actually just broke the metal rather than the weld. And I don't know, like I would have, I'd like to think that if it was like that preseason I would have seen it. But it doesn't look like a super new break. It's hard to tell because it's running into dirt. So it could be a new break and it just got dirty. I didn't think that I'd run it through anything too hard today, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna try it this way. Probably have some fixing to do on that and I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it so that it doesn't break entirely and fall off. It's a little after 9.30 and uh, I'm gonna quit for the night. Uh, I got the field finished here at the home farm. Um, so I think there's a little less than 70 acres in that field. Um, I did 20 or so last night, so got maybe close to 80 acres planted today. Somewhere in that ballpark. Um, I feel like it's been a slog for no more than I've gotten actually done today, but that's sort of what happens when you're used to using a 30-foot planter and you go to a less than 19-foot. Um, not exactly sure what the game plan is for tomorrow. Um, I may plant a little bit before I start spraying, but I need to take a look at the forecast and kind of see how windy it's going to be later, uh, Friday and Saturday. I think Friday's windy and Saturday look like it might be okay, um, but that was 12 hours ago, so who knows how it's changed. Food. Time for food and some sleep.